Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create projections and projected light in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I've just created a very simple scene with this plane and this box and we're going to begin by trying to create a projected light that projects an image onto this box here. Now in order to begin this tutorial we first need to turn off all the lights in our scene and we can do that by making sure our document sun is turned off just on the little click option here and going to our settings under environment we're going to find the background environment and we're going to turn that off too just by ticking off that box. What this will mean is if you hit render it will just be a pitch black image because there's no light in the scene and this is how we want to start this tutorial because we're going to be adding in our projected lights on top of this. From here we're going to start by first creating our light and to do this I'm going to use the rectangle light so we can then add a projection image to that rectangle. I'm going to do this just by drawing out my rectangle here and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's facing in the general direction of my cube there. Now what you may want to do is just once you've made that rectangle light if you open up your asset editor and then go in the settings you just might want to adjust the size of this to be a suitable size for the image you're going to be using. My image is going to be square so I'm using a 5x5 five five rectangle here. Now I'm just going to pan this down so it's facing my box like so and what we're then going to do is we're going to add the image to this light and to do that under the color and texture option I'm going to click on the map option here, go into bitmap, find my image I want to use which is this image here and hit OK and then we're going to click the back option there and that will apply that image to my map. Now you might see there's no change to this image at this time and actually if we hit our render and open up our render preview here you'll see that the kind of view of this light is still white it hasn't changed to my image. The reason for this is that by default V-Ray turns off the map option with this little tick box option next to your map here. So in order to turn it on we just click on the tick box and it will replace it with our image. Now you might find we've added the image in but it still just looks like a kind of glowing light. We haven't really got any definition to this image, you can kind of see it in the preview there but we definitely can't see it in the kind of image here. Now in order to make this light appear more clear we can use this directionality option to essentially focus in the light we have. Now at the moment it's on a directionality of 0, if we add it on a 0 0.5 you'll see that direction gets tighter and the image becomes more in focus. Actually what I'm going to do is up it to a directionality of 1 to start with, which will make it perfectly in sync with the light source and you'll see there that we've now got this kind of square appearing on our box. Now what happens with the directionality is it actually increases the intensity of the light in question. So whenever you up your directionality we have to lower down our intensity value and I'm just going to put this on a 1 for now. And there you can see, if we sort of zoom in back on my box here, that we then have our image in place glowing kind of on the screen. Now, if you want it a little bit less sharp, maybe you want to have it slightly fuzzy, we can play around with that directionality. You can make it a 0.99, for instance, and you'll see there it kind of fades it out. Sometimes I'll go for kind of like a 0.98 or 997 or something like that so it's almost nearly in focus but not quite just to give it that kind of projection look but you can dial it in and out depending on the exact look that you're going for there let's go for a 0.999 now once you've got this we've now got our projection working it might be that you want to dial up the intensity a bit to make it a bit brighter but currently it's very square, we haven't really got any of the kind of fall off light you get. You can see there's a bit scattering around here but it's a very sharp image. So what I'll often do is I'll actually copy my light source and create two lights which we're going to be using for this. One to create the actual image and projection and the other to create a kind of fall off or a kind of bleed out of the image around that kind of focused image that I'm projecting there. Now to do this I'm just going to take my original light, we're going to use the copy tool, we're going to make a copy and we're just going to move it slightly in front of that light there so I can see that I've got two separate lights. What happens if you copy a V-Ray light in your scene is it actually won't duplicate the light, it will kind of just make an exact replica of the first light you've made and any changes to this new copy will also change the original light. 
Now I don't want that for this particular tutorial because I want to make this light slightly different to the one behind it. So in order to do that we need to select that light source, go into our properties under lights and we can hit this make unique option. What that then does is you'll see we've got now two lights in Vero. One's rectangle light and one's rectangle light one and the number one one will be this new light that we've made here. Now what we can do is I can actually change the directionality of that light to make it a little less in focus and we're going to do this just as we're looking at our render so we can see any changes that are being made. Now what you will find is that if we lower this down, let's just put it on a 0.5 for example, it's now completely blocking out my previous light. The reason for this, and you can kind of see it in the preview here, is that actually you can sort of see it in the black silhouette there. These lights are actually physical objects in the scene currently, and one is now blocking out the light of the one behind it. In order to make them not physical objects, we need to go back in the settings under options and click on this invisible option. And I'm going to do this for both lights here, just so they're not physical objects in that scene. Now you can see, if we sort of zoom in on our light piece here, that we've now got two lights. One is the sharp image we can see, and the other is a slightly more diffused image, which is my light number one. And actually, I'm going to put this on a kind of 0.9 for now. And you can see here, it's kind of creating this little halo around my image. Now you might want to dial out the intensity there, but all I'm looking to do is kind of create a nice sort of bleed off to that main light. A good way to check is you can always turn one of them off and just sort of have a look at just how the other is being affected there. So maybe it's something like this we want and we're going to put it on a 0.89 maybe. You've always got to kind of just play around with these settings until you get the look that you're going for. There, maybe slightly higher. As you can see, it's kind of a juggle between the intensity values and the directional values until you get it just bright enough to give you that little blurred edge, but also not too bright that it's kind of over brightening and kind of overexposing my main values. So I think somewhere around here is kind of what I'm looking for. I've got my main projection and then I've got my little halo of light around the outside. So that's kind of got my main projection piece working and the beauty of this technique is what you can do is actually I'm projecting on a flat surface here but we can change that and tweak that surface if it had it at a slight angle. You can see it wraps around the edge of the cube to project around there. We could have kind of circular shapes in here too and the projection will also wrap around those. And also we can have kind of objects in front of the light, like here, which will occlude it and block it out for any objects behind. So you can achieve quite interesting effects with this technique just by kind of adding objects in and projecting them in certain ways where the light will kind of blend and bleed around the objects and cast strange shadows and occlude certain parts of the light in certain areas, like so. Now one thing we can do just to add to the realism of this is often with projections and projected images you'll get a kind of nice cone of light which represents the projection in this case. Now in order to do this we're going to introduce another light which is the spotlight to the scene and I'm going to do that just by clicking on the spotlight tool in V-Ray. We're going to draw out from the center of my piece a kind of cone and then I'm going to hold the shift key just to lock it into place like so. And there we have my kind of cone of light here. Now, this is all very well, but it's kind of now also casting more light on my object than I wanted. I'm going to just sort of zoom it in slightly there. And it's sort of overexposing my thing a little bit. And all I kind of want it for is that cone of light, which I'm kind of not really seeing in my preview. In order to kind of make this cone a little bit more visible, we can start to apply what's called a kind of atmospheric fog effect to the environment in order to actually see this kind of cone object that I've created. To do this, I'm just going to pause the render. We're going to go into the settings. We're going to go to volumetric environment here. Click it on like so. And under environmental fog, we're just going to kind of tweak this so we've got a distance of 30 and a height of 10 which is for my scene here. If you're using a much bigger scene you might need to play around with those values but this works for quite small objects like this kind of two three meter high cube I've got here. 
What this would then do is if we then re-render the scene, you'll see that we now have all of this kind of light bleed coming off my objects, and in particular, my cone there, which is the kind of most effective of that. You'll see it's also happening for the rectangles, and you may want this effect, but actually sometimes you may just want the cone causing the projection. If that's the case, if we go back into our V-Ray options, go back to my lights and find my rectangle lights, we can actually turn off their atmospheric options just by going into options here and under effect atmospherics we can turn that off. If I turn it off for both of them you'll see that we no longer have the squares, we've just got my cone projection which makes it feel like my projected image is coming from that cone. With that spotlight as well we can also go to the options here and we can click off this effect diffuse which will actually stop it from lighting up my scene anymore so my scene is only being lit by my rectangle lights and this cone all it's doing is applying that kind of cone effect to the light there you may also want to kind of drop your image into that cone light too to give it a little bit of color to match in with here sometimes it's quite subtle and when you've got an intensity that's quite high like this, you may not be able to see it that clearly. So it all depends on the kind of intensities you're working with. But usually I kind of like to keep the intensity quite high so we get that strong cone. And you may need to just balance it out by just bumping up the intensity of your other pieces. Let's put this up to a three and this one up to a two. You can see once we add the fog, everything gets a little bit darker so you might need to just play around with those pieces of intensity. But there you can see we've now got our kind of projection happening here and we've got our cone for our projection there. So this was just a quick video tutorial in how to create 3D projections using V-Ray lights and V-Ray rectangle and spotlights in order to kind of create those effects. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and can find many different kind of applications for this effect. And if you want to watch any other videos on rendering, tweaking lights and creating atmospheric scenes in V-Ray for Rhino, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.